In Good Shape, your health magazine on DW, featuring an interview with a different expert every week. I'm at the Berlin Charité at the Emergency Department with the neurologist, Dr. Martin Ebinger, and yeah, you specialized in strokes. What are the symptoms of a stroke? Well, there can be many symptoms in stroke, but the most common are summarized in a score. It's called the FAST score. And FAST is short for face, so facial droop, arm, so you cannot lift your arm or it's falling down when you try to lift it, um, speech, so you have trouble speaking or understanding other people who are speaking. And then the T is simply for time, because you've got to be fast. You've got to be uh, very prompt. When you realize that you have these symptoms, then the next thing you should do is not lay down and try to sleep over it or call your mom or whatever. You dial 911 or whatever is the emergency number in your country, and then you need to get as fast as possible to an emergency department, ideally from a hospital that has a stroke unit. Mm -hmm. So if only one of those three things are affected, is it still a valid score? Do you still have to rush it into could, the hospital? Yes, absolutely. It could still be a stroke. And to be honest, there's no ideal st stroke score. Probably if you think as a patient, I've never experienced this before, this is very different, and especially if it's a one-sided thing. So if this is something that happens on one side of your body or, and that's not working anymore, then it's highly likely, if it's an abrupt onset, that this could be a stroke. Well, why do you have to be that amazingly fast? Because there's not a single organ in your body that compares to the brain in terms of the sensitivity towards hypoxia. So if there's not enough oxygen and not enough blood then these cells will simply die. And this is something you cannot reverse. Once the brain tissue is dead, it's lost. And, it's, and the, this tissue is so important for you because it controls all your body movements and all your capabilities. So the whole functioning of you as a person and your body, it's dependent on the brain. And as soon as these cells die, you may notice that you are in big trouble. And when the cells die, they don't come back. They're not they able to recover. Back. No, yeah. but there's a lot we can do because the stroke starts in a small area and it will spread out. So within one minute, 1.9 million neurons die. So as long as you wait, the more neurons die. But if we can restore the blood flow, if we can reopen the vessel, either with medications or by a thrombectomy, so a mechanical way of opening that vessel, we can restore the blood flow and we can save all that tissue that is at risk of dying. And that's why it's so important to be fast. You say that um, neurons die in a stroke, so what actually happens in the, in the vessel, in the artery? Mm. What causes so the stroke? So most of the times it's an ischemic stroke. That means that a vessel is blocked and there's no more blood flowing through it. That's about 90, 85% of all strokes. And then there is maybe 10, 15% of strokes that are hemorrhagic. That means a vessel bursts and the, all the blood flows into the brain and causes a lot of damage too. But the most common cause is an ischemic stroke, the blockage of an artery. After the first assessment and treatment at the emergency department, patients usually go to a stroke unit. What happens there? Well, the stroke unit is part of all the evidence-based medicine that is available for stroke patients. It clearly is shown that stroke treatment on a stroke unit enhances the chances of a good functional outcome. And why is that? Frankly, we don't know exactly. It's a bit of a black box. So the patient comes in and when he goes out, he's better than on a usual ward. But it's very likely that it has got to do with um, the multidisciplinary team that takes care of the patients and really cares about stroke. And they pay attention to all the complications that may occur in the first days after a stroke happened, such as pneumonia or that they have um, sores um, because of pressure and many other things that can happen. We control for blood pressure, we look at if the patient gets fever or not, 
how's the blood sugar, do we have to lower it or not, and all these things happen on a stroke unit and speech therapy starts early on and they look for is there dysphagia, has the um, patient trouble swallowing and um, then the physiotherapist come and the neurologist for example uh, starts to um, diagnose what really could have caused this particular stroke because there may be many reasons and many patients don't know their risk factors yet and so we have to do a lot of examinations. But if the outcome is actually better on a stroke unit than a normal hospital, wouldn't it mean that in an ideal world if I've got a stroke I should not go to the next available hospital which is maybe a small hospital but seek for the bigger one like university hospitals with a stroke unit so if I see my first symptoms just get into a car and drive to a stroke unit instead of the next um, okay. center of care? First of all don't drive yourself if you have a stroke. Okay, that's fair. Um, so you call the emergency department or the, the emergency services and they will arrive with an ambulance and they have their own rules and the rule usually is that you go to the closest nearest by hospital that is adequate for the specific disease that you have. So in case they realize that you have a stroke they may decide that they have to circumvent um, a specific small hospital which does not have a stroke unit. They don't necessarily have to go to a university hospital as long as it's a hospital that has a stroke unit that is known to treat stroke patients on a regular basis. They are experienced with stroke. That's the place to go. So they will bring you there. In Germany, for example, it's not that difficult because it's a relatively spoken small country and almost around every corner there's a stroke unit if you compare it to let's say Australia where distances are far longer. We got a lot of viewer questions for instance from Ibu Bronjahe from Ghana and she says I've got a mother who had a stroke a year and a half ago. She's 73 years old, mm -hmm. she's got diabetes mm -hmm. and takes blood pressure medications and now she wants to know is it possible um, that she can recover fully? Um, the bulk of improvement actually occurs within the first couple of months. However, um, recent data show that many, many stroke patients will keep on recovering from their stroke. It's just that the, the speed of recovery, the speed of improvement slows down. So the bulk occurs in, within the first month. Having said that, even a couple of years later on, there's still room for improvement. Yeah, there's still hope. Mm -hmm. Dr. Ebinger, thanks so much for inviting me today in your clinic. Thank you. Thank you.